Hi, this is Steve Kovac, one of the educators for Healthmark Industries. I am here to talk to you about what goes on inside a sterilizer after you close the door. Ooh, that can be scary. This is one of our quick tips meant for you, the sterile processing professional. Whether you work in an MDRD, CSSD, CPD, SPD, this general information can help you do a better job and understand why you're doing that job. So let's get to the first video and see what goes on inside that sterilizer. Let me load it up and get it going here. Okay, here we go. As we go inside that sterilizer, we're actually seeing some pill pouches. Those pill pouches are individually put in a rack on their edge the way they should be. You're gonna see the vacuum pulse go back and forth, the steam pulse. Doesn't matter where you're at, you should be loading these this way. But notice the pressure and the energy and what these pouches are going through. And in fact, if you look, when the vacuum comes in, it sort of takes a form. It looks like there might be even a base in there. But you start to get the understanding of what these pouches and what anything goes through in a sterilizer. Let's go to our next video here. And now this here, like all the videos I'm showing you are time lapse, and they're taken at different times during the steam sterilization cycle. We're specifically showing items in a steam sterilizer because it's the most popular type of sterilization done. And as you can look here, you can see that the pouches were not in a rack, they're laid flat on top of each other. And as they go through the different phases, this top one is expanding properly, but look at these bottom ones. They are not, even though they're laying on a basket here, look at how these are not expanding properly. And so you don't have the vacuum and the steam pulse. And so what's going on here? Is enough sterilant getting in contact with the items in the pouches? This is not the correct way. But again, you can begin to see the water, the condensation, another factor of what an item in a sterilizer is going through. We're now going to go through the next video here. And this one, I got to put a shout out to my good friend, Dave DeGrossi. Dave has allowed me over the years to show this video. And now we would not put a basin in a pill pouch this way in a sterilizer. But I know you can understand why. We are showing you the sheer force of what goes on inside a steam sterilizer. Look at how that pouch goes through the extreme changes of the vacuum pulse. Plus you get to see the chart above with the chamber pressure, the drain pressure, and the minutes here. But notice the the pressure and the temperature of what these pouches go through. This is very important. Thanks again, Dave, for letting me use this video. So let's get to the next slide. So I wanna go through some key points here that are very, very important. Now, again, we showed you peel pouches. Uh, I didn't show you containers or wrapped items. And the reason I took these with peel pouches is so you could see the force of what something is going through in the steam sterilization process, the energy that takes place of the force uh, closing in and the vacuum pressure and what goes on and then the temperature and then the water va vapor, the condensation. This is what the items are going through. Since we did use peel pouches, I want to take time to talk about them and what you saw. There was a paradox at one time I learned a long time ago. The stronger the seal, the less likely the bursting, but the more likely the tearing. You saw what these pouches went through, the pressure, the energy, the moisture, the temperature. The laminate or the film is very important. We know that pouches vary in cost, and one of the reasons is, is the film or the laminate. Some pouches only have two layers of laminate, Others can have up to nine. Having more layers is important and makes it stronger. So the next thing as you think about that pouch is the medical paper. The paper side in the paper plastic type or with a Tyvek. 
the paper is measured in grams, the weight. So the heavier that paper, the better it is. Some pouches only have 10, 20, even 30 grams, but the better pouches have about 70 grams of weight for that paper. So you put gram, a higher weight of paper with more film, you have a stronger, better pouch that can take those forces that are going on inside that steam sterilizer. Next is seal strength. You can see that there's basically three seals when it comes to a pouch. The seal put in by the manufacturer, and then you as a medical device reprocessing or sterile processing professional, you either can do a self-seal, seal on a pouch, or a heat seal. That is very important. We're going to have a quick tip very soon on sealing pouches and the importance of peel pouching and heat sealers. For Look for that quick tip. The next thing you see is loading correctly. We saw just by the pouch being correctly in a rack compared to laying them completely flat on top of each other was not the correct way. Again, we'll have another quick tip for you that'll cover all loading, mixed loads, containers, wrap trays, and so on. So again, hopefully you can see the force and understand why you must do things correctly when it comes to loading and how you place something in a sterilizer and the forces that the items are going to go through. So again, look for those other quick tips. And I want to close with saying, remember, you're in a profession that you can make a difference each day in a patient's life. Some say knowledge is power, but we feel the real power comes with the sharing of knowledge. All the educators at Healthmark have unbelievable experience, and we want to share that knowledge with you to help you understand why you are doing things so you can do the best you can. Because when you understand why, you do a better job. We also want you to be safe and healthy wherever you work. And remember that you are the heart of the hospital just doing a great job every day. And as I say, always remember to keep it clean. Thank you for taking the time today to watch this quick tip. And if you have any suggestions or comments, there's two ways to contact us. You can go to asktheeducator at hmark.com or at the end of this video, the YouTube has a comment section. Put your comments. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to hear. This is Steve Kovac saying goodbye from Healthmark and see you on another quick tip. Take care.